Good evening, everybody. Thank you for returning. Tonight, I wanted to do a pasta fajol lasagna, and it's sort of a hybrid dish. I was thinking about it, and I like beans, I like pasta. I like pasta fajol, but I also like lasagna, so I thought, why not blend the two? And that's what I'm gonna do tonight. And by the way, thank you for everyone watching these videos. I appreciate the feedback. I've really enjoyed, you know, responding to, to you guys, you know, the thumbs up you're leaving, all the little comments. I look at all of them and um, really, really appreciate it. If there, I, can, I intend on continuing to do this. So if there's anything that you want to see me do and I'll put my own spin on it, I will certainly do that. Just leave it in the comments. I mean, if you wanna see a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with my own spin or anything like that, just go ahead and leave it in the, in the, um, in the comments below and I will do whatever literally you, you want me to cook. And so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the sausage. This is probably my favorite sausage right now in the store. And I got a spicy version. So I will go ahead and start cooking the sausage. And I know it's in meatball form. I'm not gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna cook it down, but um, they didn't have the loose version. So uh, I don't know, I'll take maybe about six, I don't know, maybe I'll do the whole thing. That's pretty spicy. I might, uh, I might do about eight of these and call it good because I don't want it, want it too incredibly spicy. So let me go ahead and start with that. Okay, so the sausage is cooking behind me and actually I did end up adding the whole pound. I figured what the heck, tomorrow maybe for breakfast I'll eat the rest with eggs, I don't know. But whatever the case, we're gonna go ahead and start chopping the vegetables for this. Once that sausage cooks down, it will, you know, kind of stick to the pan as sausage does. Onions are a great deglazer. Um, you can use wine, you can use water, you can use pasta sauce, you can use anything, basically. But I, I like onions because not only do they deglaze the pan, but then they start caramelizing as well. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And the oven is on behind me, so if it's doing that weird creaky thing that it does, uh, please bear with it. We'll go ahead and, and uh, crush some garlic down in the meantime. That looks about right. And I want this on the slice setting. I kind of want the chunks to be a little bit large on this. And I'm just gonna add it right to the onion bowl. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop up some mushrooms. So typically, I mean, I don't know if you add mushrooms to your lasagna, I don't know what you add it to, but 
I thought it would be nice. And part of it too is that the liquid, you know, when you make a, a, a pasta fajoule, you have, you know, maybe a, a beef base, a, a chicken base, a, whatever base you want, a pork base, and you have a stock. And with this, I won't, I won't be using a stock because it is technically a lasagna, it's a casserole. And so the liquid that I'm gonna be using is lesser. And uh, mushrooms have a lot of liquid when they bake down. And so part of the liquid in this dish is going to come from the mushrooms, which in essence is going to give it a little more um, earthy flavor. And I will not be adding stock to this. I thought about it. I thought about adding a, a vegetable stock, but I didn't think I wanted to do that. And instead, I just wanted to use the water from the mushrooms and a little bit of pasta sauce. And I'll show you the pasta sauce. So what I do is I mix them. So this is a vodka sauce. This is a tomato basil. I'm going to mix the two and we'll get kind of a richness with a tangy all at once. This is a little different. It's a hybrid dish. And so... I'm doing things a little differently. So the water from the mushrooms will bake down as we put this in the oven and it will assist in cooking the pasta. These slices are not too thin. If they're overly thin, it will be a really weird texture when it bakes down. So these are pretty thick and you can see how thick that is. You don't want a mushy texture when it bakes down. That's probably about right. Yeah, that's about right. I don't want a huge mushroom flavor in this. It was really just about the water and a little bit of earthiness as opposed to a stock. So I think I'm gonna stop right there. The rest of these will go in an omelet tomorrow, along with the rest of the sausage. In pasta fajol, you can add pancetta, you can add whatever, you know, kind of ham element, pork element you want, or you could just do a vegetarian version. I chose to add Italian sausage to mine. I just kind of have a preference toward Italian sausage. But um, the other thing too is the Italian sausage, when it, when it cooks out, and this was kind of my rationale, is that, you know, I'm going to be hard cooking the pasta, the lasagna noodles, because I don't have the amount of liquid that I normally would have in a lasagna. And so, you know, I'm gonna take these noodles and, and, and parboil them. And then some people say don't add oil to, to uh, pasta water, but I always have, I mean, it, it does eliminate that whole sticking factor. And I think there's a texture loss. I don't know if there's a flavor loss, but I think there's some sort of texture loss with it. To me, it's worth it to not be able to stand there and fight the whole sticking process. So what I'm gonna do is because the, the oil will leach out of the sausage as it's currently doing, I will add a little bit of that oil that's leaching out into the water of the lasagna noodles um, to, to loosen these up so that they don't stick to each other. So as you can see, the sausage has, you know, it's turned out nicely. There is a little bit of oil on the bottom. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna add that to the the pan for the, the pasta and just go ahead and let this, uh, this pasta cook. And as we said before, we're gonna go ahead and add the garlic and onion to the, the sausage. And also to the sausage mix, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of onion powder. I don't want a very strong onion powder. I don't want it to drown out the natural onion. If you, you know, if you use too much, it will have an artificial flavor. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. Same thing with the garlic, just a tad. Don't wanna drown out the natural garlic and I will be adding fennel seeds.
Okay, so while the sausage is still frying in the background and the pasta is boiling, I'm going to cut a few tomatoes. That is going to be one of the layers of the lasagna. I'm gonna flip this over so the mushrooms are on the other side. As always, vegetable wash. There is also juice in the tomato, and so I will be leaving the seeds in. I'm not gonna squeeze these out. That might sound weird, but the juice will come out of the tomato and also help cook the remainder of those noodles. Also, another thick slice. Not doing these too thinly, it'll just be real, a really weird mush if they're too thin by the time it bakes. I'm not gonna use those ends. That'll be a strange texture. So we're gonna leave those out. We'll put those in salad. In the meantime, actually, I think those uh, pasta noodles are, um, are actually part cooked enough and I'm gonna pull those right now. By putting the pasta on ice water, we are removing the starch value from it, which is undesirable. I really do prefer the starch in the, in the casserole when it bakes, but it's sort of a trade-off. So I am going to go ahead and, and shock that pasta All right, so there's our thick slices of tomato. So remember when I said the uh, onions are a great deglazer, so they get done deglazing and then they start re-caramelizing. Basically the water, like I said, will come out of this. I'm gonna save all this fluid. All of this will end up in the lasagna, in the casserole. And um, this will also deglaze the pan that's, that's occurring now with the onions. And here we have the mixture. It's steaming up, but I think you can see that well enough. Basically, as soon as I put the mushrooms into that pan, it started deglazing immediately. So I'm pulling the mushrooms. The mushrooms are par-cooked at this point, just like the pasta is. And by the time we put everything into the oven and go ahead and bake it off, it'll be the perfect texture. And now we're gonna start building the casserole. I'm gonna put a layer of pasta sauce down first. And like I said, I'm gonna do half and half. So this is half vodka sauce, half tomato basil. So there's the vodka. Here's the tomato basil. Okay. And that's gonna round out that acidity of the tomato basil sauce with the, with the vodka sauce. I really like this combination. Just spread that out. In a lasagna, you'd be adding multiple cheeses to this, you know, your ricotta, your Parmesan, your mozzarella, whatever you're using. This isn't meant to be a cheese dish per se. This is a hybrid of the bean dish and the lasagna. So I won't be adding all of those cheeses we will be adding cheese at the end, but not in the middle of it. Just like you would to build a lasagna. And then, of course, the star of the show, the beans. I have drained these out and I'm just taking them right out of the can, as is. Sprinkling them on. You could deglaze, in the end, you could deglaze this sausage mix with, I would recommend maybe a Sangiovese or something. You could finally deglaze with wine. I just wasn't feeling it in this recipe. I'm not sure why. I'm sure it would be great. I just didn't see the distinct advantage of doing that in this dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it as is. There's also some herbs I have here, some Italian parsley. I'm not gonna chop these, I'm just gonna loosely sprinkle some on here. 
You could chop these if you wanted. I like kind of an herb bite when I bite into something, so these are a little larger. And then a little bit of oregano. Oregano is very strong, so only a few little pieces of this. I feel like the fresh herbs um, just serve the dish better. And so that's, that's it for that. And we're gonna go ahead and restart with the layer of sauces again. Again, just like you would a lasagna. And you can start to see why the noodles will end up cooking within all of this sauce. I'm just gonna add some of those layers of tomato. This will add a little bit of water again to cook the rest of that pasta. We'll add that in there. And I love the texture. I mean, when I buy a pizza, I actually order tomatoes on it, like fresh tomatoes. I love that texture. Again with the pasta. I'm overlapping these just a little bit. And there's a couple of tomatoes left. I'll just plop those on in spaces where I think the other tomatoes weren't. So maybe like right there and right there. I'm gonna overlap this top layer more than I have the other layers because I do realize that I actually have quite a bit of pasta left over. And that'll do it for the herbs. I don't wanna add any more because I don't want this to be overtaken by oregano and parsley, so that's enough. And we are now using the remaining 
of the sausage mixture, which isn't much, it's literally just mushrooms at this point, but mushroom and onion, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and put whatever's left on top of here. Spread that around. Another layer of beans. So the only thing I'm going to do for cheese, as opposed to a lasagna that would, you would normally do where you're embedding the whole thing with cheese, I will put a little bit on the top. This is actually left over from the, uh, <laughs> the grilled cheese and uh, the bacon grilled cheese and tomato soup video. And I went ahead and I grated the rest of this and I froze it so that I could use it whenever I needed it. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm just going to top this, this with some cheese here. This was that blend from the grilled cheese and also from the uh, smoked salmon cheesecake video. This is some of the leftover Belvitano as well as the Romano. And I did the same thing, I froze it and I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle the top with this. It's pretty dry. It's not like a stringy mozzarella that's going to, you know, be this whole cheese thing that we're not really going for in this dish. It's just a little bit of an accent on top, really. And so I have the oven set at 350 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and cover this with foil. And I'm going to go ahead and let it go for probably about 30 minutes. Okay, so while our casserole is baking, I just want to go ahead and start slicing a little bit of the fresh mozzarella that's going to go on top. I decided to try this, this brand. It's, it's a Murray's brand, and it's free-range and grass-fed, and see actually how it compares to this block. So let's see how that does. Let me drain off the liquid. And here we have it. And I'm gonna do a taste test. So I'm gonna compare it to this one. We are gonna add probably both to the, to the casserole, but I just wanted to see what the difference was. I saw both of them at the store and I was curious. This one I'm familiar with. I've made a ton of capreses with this, but I have never tried that. There actually is a color difference. You can see this. This one's off-white. This one's almost stark white. And this one has a much softer texture. This is much firmer. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. This one first. Oh, wow. Look how quickly that sliced. Oh, it's almost like a soft-boiled egg. It's so creamy. Oh. Oh my goodness. I have never had a fresh mozzarella that way. That's incredible. Now there is a little bit of toughness of the skin. There's a little bit of a skin around the edge, but if you were to peel that off like I'm doing now, and that middle part, oh, 
I have made fresh mozzarella, and it has not been that good. Okay, so I'm going to safely say, I already know what this tastes like. And it, it's not a bad cheese. I love this cheese. But this is phenomenal. And if I try the rind... There's a tanginess to it that this, this has tanginess, but not like this. So if I compare it, this is much saltier. It's much firmer. I would almost compare this to almost like a hard boiled egg versus a soft boiled egg in texture. This is more grainy. This has no grain whatsoever. It is entirely smooth. It melts in your mouth. You almost don't need to chew. You just swallow it whole. It, it just melts right down. That is incredible. So I would say if you're making a caprese in which you're going to put balsamic vinegar on it and oil and all these different things, which is going to kind of toughen up everything, it's going to break down the proteins a little bit. I would say go ahead and go with the log that you normally buy. But if you're going to do a cheese tray or an entertainment platter of any kind, use this one where it's eaten as is with no embellishments, no additions. It's just like that because it stands alone and you really wouldn't want to touch it. This is, this is an amazing product. Um, and again, I will continue using this for caprese's, but I will start using that for cheese trays. And so when this casserole comes out of the oven, there's gonna be slices. And now knowing what I know, I'm gonna put that to the side and use it for other purposes. But for the purpose of this casserole, I'm gonna go ahead and slice this up. And it's a standby of mine. It's one I always use for pretty much whatever, but I feel like it would almost be a shame to put this on it and let those other flavors just drown that out. It will also drown out the texture. The texture is unbelievable. So it's a pretty big pan. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I'll just do the whole thing. Nothing wrong with slicing ahead of time and then being able to use for later, right? Actually, I don't want this picking up the flavor of plastic. And so I'm gonna put this back in the original container. I did drain off the juice, so let me put the lid back on so it doesn't dry out. So now it's been about a half hour. I'm gonna go ahead and take the casserole out of the oven and we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes before we cut into it so that it doesn't just ooze everywhere. Now, while this is resting, this is when I'm gonna put the cheese on, the mozzarella that we cut. I'm gonna just let it melt onto there naturally. I didn't brown the top or anything. I'm not gonna do that. This is a hybrid dish. And so I don't wanna brown the cheese on top for this particular dish. I do, I do wanna let it just melt on there though.
And as we let it sit, it will go ahead and do that. That pan is very hot. I'm going to cover it back over. And let the cheese melt on top. As you can see, we have melted the cheese onto the casserole and we have cooled this down a little bit. Uh, I want to say about six minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and dig in. I think it's going to be ready to just tear off a piece of this the same way you would a lasagna. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that looks so good. I can't tell I can't tell if a fork or a spoon would be better. Mmm. You know what? It doesn't matter what the utensil is. It's great. Mmm. You have the bean quality, you have the noodle quality, the graininess of the, the beans, the creaminess of the pasta, certainly the creaminess of the cheese. Look at that. And that's kudos to fresh mozzarella. Very, very stringy, good quality cheese. A little bit of this tomato that we put on there. For the acid. The sausage is just spicy enough. This didn't require any cracked black pepper or any form of pepper at all. because the sausage did everything for us. Oh, this is perfect. We didn't add any salt. There's no need. The sodium content from the cheese is doing everything for us, as well as from the sausage. Mmm. This is perfect. So there you have it. Pasta fajoule lasagna. My spin on two of my favorite dishes. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. And thank you again for watching. Very sincerely, thank you for watching. And if you wanna see, and again, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you wanna see anything further, if you want to see me make any other thing and put my spin on it, I will go ahead and do that, okay? Thank you. Have a good night.